Hello everyone, I'm back again so soon with a chill sketchbook session number three. In case you're wondering what brought upon the swift return, the truth of the matter is that I've been hopelessly behind on my schedule and needed to seriously catch up before the end of the month because this video is so kindly sponsored by Squarespace, which is the all-in-one platform that makes it super easy to build a professional website for your online presence. Something I really like about Squarespace is how easy it is to connect and display my Instagram feed within the website. It's always a good idea to include fresh work on a portfolio website, and since it isn't something I want to update regularly, having a built-in Instagram feed really helps with that. And it's also quick and easy to add my YouTube videos as well, and thanks to the automatic image scaling feature, everything looks super neat and presentable. It's very convenient not to have to edit my images or anything else to make them fit into the website properly and seamlessly. Another feature I'm excited to check out at some point is the built-in print-on-demand services that can be connected directly to your Squarespace shop and website. I've always wanted to look into this and offer more interesting products with my artwork on them, but did not want to have my merch all over the place on different websites, so the integration feature really takes care of that problem. If you're interested in launching your own website, you can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial where you can easily and quickly set up a site. And when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art for 10% off your first purchase. Use the code cosmic spectrum art and check out the link in my description below. And now let's get to the video. So as you probably saw in the title, I somehow managed to drop ink and stain this drawing a grand total of three times and I didn't even notice the third drop right away so by the time I went to wipe it up it had kind of dried up already but thankfully since uh, it was a whole droplet it didn't get enough time to dry completely but maybe if it did I wouldn't have made an even bigger mess trying to wipe it up which you'll see what I mean uh, I have it all captured on video so, when I sat down to fill out this page, I pretty much had nothing in mind whatsoever, and upon thinking about who I wanted to draw, I landed on Noelle, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, she's one of my characters, and I draw her all the time. Actually, like, most of the time, as I've noticed lately, but, uh, anyway, yeah, I had a tiny doodle in my other loose sketchbook of Noelle sitting on some ledge outside a bunch of shrubs and angrily biting into a burger and a Hajin just like poking out of the shrubs and looking at her pitifully. But uh, yeah, I know you guys don't know much about the story of my comic because I barely talk about it. But some time ago when I was focusing on Noelle's character arc, I had this idea about her temporarily just completely giving up on life and becoming extremely lazy and unmotivated for some time, uh, during which Hajin constantly tries to kind of hover a bit and check in on her and talk to her uh, talk her out of the sudden change in personality yeah i don't know if i'm going to uh properly write this into the script slash story yet but i just kept having ideas for these hilarious little scenes where noelle just like lounges around the school property rage eating fast food from a local joint and just throwing wrappers at, or her soda bottle or um soda can cap sorry at the at some classmates that drive by making fun of her actually i can totally see astrid being one of those people that would do that but yeah just like small things i laugh about when i uh think about my script but anyways i also really enjoy drawing various facial expressions on my characters and just characters in general but I noticed lately that i never give myself any opportunities to do that anymore especially in recent years. I've mostly been doing um, finished illustrations and a lot of freelance work. Uh, and my illustrations are typically meant to be as stickers or some sort of finished product like a print. And thus the facial expressions that I choose for those tend to always fall somewhere between neutral grumpiness, a tiny smile, or uh, this pretty romanticized melancholic type of face that I love drawing so much, as you have probably noticed. So here we have something like agitation and frustration and some sort of um, awkward concern, like there, there, this too shall pass, dearie, from Hajin. 
Yeah, I always imagine Heijun sometimes speaking in an outdated way because she's been around for so long. In a lot of ways, she's a bit like a grandma, which is pretty hilarious when you think about it, but anyway. Yeah, so on a technical note, uh, for this one, I decided to use my typical choice of ink, uh, which is Rohrer and Klingner in the Umbra color, which is my favorite go-to brown ink at the moment, which I also ended up spilling at the end of this drawing and unfortunately lost like half the little bottle, but it was just some sort of cursed drawing day for me, but yeah, back to the ink. So it was pretty interesting to observe how the three different inks I've used on this new paper, um, new sketchbook paper so far, all have actually behaved pretty differently from what I've noticed. For one, I noticed that this ink did not skip at all. It's something that I've complained about in the last two videos. So you guys, all my guesses as to what causes the skipping have been wrong. And I think what actually makes the pen line skip, as it turns out, is the consistency of the ink most likely and not the humidity in the room or the smoothness of the paper or whatever else I tried to attribute it to. Um, I do think it's possible that the other things are contributing factors, but this ink, flowed smooth as butter and I found it much much easier to use and it's actually possible that because this ink is a bit more runny than the Dr. PH Martin's one I used last time it uh, tended to slip out more easily from the nib when I violently flung the pen at, uh, like out at the end of every stroke which is something that I just tend to do thus resulting in these ink drop accidents yeah, so my habit of flinging the pen is definitely not something that I can get rid of because unfortunately I do it on autopilot, but I am pretty excited to draw uh, to try drawing with a fountain pen that has a G nib attachment, which is something that I recently ordered through mail and I will let you guys when I get uh, I will let you guys know when I get that pen and um, obviously I'll test it out and I'll let you know how using it goes for me I'm hoping for the best because that would be really great honestly like dropping ink three times was absolutely ridiculous during the process of this as you will soon see so yeah back to the sketching session I'm very happy with how this particular page turned out. I know I've been pretty much saying about saying that about every page. Eh, actually not the first page. I guess the first one was like kind of a test thing and I wasn't particularly in love with the results there, but I think it's been getting better as I'm choosing uh, mediums that I find to be more suited for this paper. But yeah, I think I'm slowly inching towards drawing the type of stuff that I used to draw for fun all the time, which was mostly character interactions or a few small panels of something really stupid happening between the two or three characters or whatever. I was actually pulling out some of my very old artwork from high school the other day, and I honestly had a blast looking through it. I'm going to have an art journey timeline section in my upcoming art book with 3D Total, something I'm super excited about because I've never actually had anything like that in my previous art books. The timeline, I mean like the art journey timeline or whatever. Yeah, I want to make this section pretty extensive too. I think that um, it's really crazy to see how different my art was back then and yet how some of the things about it are still, still so similar. So it's going to be tough for me to select just a handful of drawings to represent each distinct period in my art journey, but I'm really looking forward to doing that. Hopefully tomorrow or someday this week is uh it's on my schedule yeah pretty pretty excited about that maybe i'll uh, post a couple of stories on my instagram <laughs> to show you guys some of the horrific slash entertaining examples of my very old artwork but yeah i have been reading a lot lately ever since somehow if, even though i've been like super busy but i still managed to find the time to like sneak in some reading now, now and then and somehow i've managed to finish like four books already just in march but yeah anyway ever since i uninstalled league of legends i have been clinging to my new kindle as the next best reality escape pod so 
Yeah, and I do think it's much better uh, as an alternative because as much as I hate this, I do get way more out of reading than I ever did out of playing games, unfortunately. I don't know, I've never been much of a gamer, but I did suffer from some serious addiction to uh, a couple of RPGs back in the day and most recently League of Legends. Yeah, this is probably because I am writing uh, now here and there and I do want to be a writer. So I suppose if I was primarily interested in like, you know, fantasy costume designs or potentially making a game, it would be a different story maybe. But I'm sure some of you know that the addiction to League of Legends is a thing that is comparable to drugs. <laughs> drugs are bad. Don't do them. Anywho. So I just got the Kindle about a month ago and the first thing I decided to do was to finish reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Um, I binged the show on Netflix when it came out and I did like it a lot in some ways so I was kind of interested to see what the books were about so I picked up the first book and read it and I have to say that there are some wild things about the books that I cannot even begin to understand. Mainly petty things for me probably but yeah I, I will always wonder why the writer didn't just ask any Russian speaking person to like you know go over her choice of terms and see if there's anything horribly wrong with them that may need to be changed because my god there is so much of that um as maybe some of you may know Russian is actually my native language and so I burst out laughing many a time while reading this these uh, books and I guess eventually I kind of got used to it you know but Boy, did it knock me out of the seriousness of some of the situations. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I'm very lukewarm about the trilogy, I have to say. Um, I'd go as far as to say it may have been kind of a waste of time for me to read these, but there was definitely something lurking in those books that I liked. Maybe thematically, maybe symbolically. I don't know. But overall, eh, kind of super forgettable for me. I have to say unfortunately but yeah before i descend into a long rambly review of everything i hated about these books i will move on i, I will say that you know i kind of enjoyed reading them i guess because um there were a lot of cliffhangers and whatnot and i burned through them very quickly but yeah like i said overall lukewarm mm, moving on yeah, so it crossed my mind to maybe do a sort of video series where I will pick one of the books I read over the course of a month and illustrate something from it in my sketchbook, turning the footage into some sort of uh, review style video discussing things I liked and things I didn't like about said book. So it's still something I'm interested in doing potentially, but upon thinking about it, I did realize that this would probably take a lot more planning than I am currently uh, capable of because of all this other stuff that's going on, unfortunately. But I'd probably have to keep notes while reading and then type up the text right as I'm done because my memory is atrocious and um, I forget things with disturbing rapidity. So. I'll probably revisit this idea sometime after the wedding uh, when things calm down a little bit. By the way, my wedding is actually scheduled for mid-May, so it's inching closer and closer and I am a bit nervous, but very excited. But yeah, so as you can see at this point in the video, I have already dropped the ink twice and um, yeah, when I the when the first one dropped, I was like, whatever, you know what? Maybe it's a bench. Maybe I'll just color in the, the bench, like fill in fill it in with brown and see how that looks. So I can cover up the splotch. But obviously, this was a completely different issue when I dropped it on Noelle's face. You know, like of all the places for ink to end, like end up somehow, it always ends up in the worst spot i remember something like this happened to me with um this illustration that i did a while back um it was from the traveler set and i had this portrait of kim's um what did he call it i think i called it perfect daughter uh yeah and during the process of that i also happened to drop this big drop of ink right on her face like it was right on her nose in the middle of the face it was the absolute worst place but 
Fortunately, in that particular drawing, I was using significantly diluted ink so that, um, obviously I saw it really quickly and um, I managed to pick it up with some tissue papers, which by the way are absolutely of paramount importance to be kept around at all times when I work with ink because I do somehow drop ink all the time, whether it be on the desk or the actual drawing. So having it within, um, just within reach to be able to grab it and quickly blot it up is uh, super important. But anyways, as you can see in this case, it was not particularly successful because I'm actually inking um, with pretty much non-diluted ink. Uh, I don't even think I put any water in this, um, which is kind of funny. It didn't even occur to me to do that, but it's probably because you know, I th there's a reason why I tend to dilute ink for my more finished illustrations, and that's because I know that I put more work into putting down the like local colors, if there are any, or um, tones, and then going in with multiple washes to create shadows and light and whatnot, so it's uh, a bit more of a detailed process, and I find that by the end, it's nice when the ink looks a little bit subdued, like when the lines look a little bit subdued and they're kind of slightly blending into everything else whereas in this case since i know that it's a relatively quick drawing it's just in my sketchbook and probably not going to do a whole lot in terms of rendering in the end and that's why i decided to just go with the solid uh umbra brown color ink and not dilute it at all but like i said because of this <laughs> the accidents were a lot more um fatal than the last time I had stuff like this happen, so honestly, I didn't think about it too much, and I decided to just proceed with the process because I figured I, I'll, I'll, you know, come up with some way to cover it up or do something to fix the mess, and I did. Oh, look at that. I just made another drop and I didn't even notice. It's funny because um, I had no idea when the drop occurred while I was drawing because by the time I noticed it, I obviously... Um, quickly tried to pick it up and whatnot, but as I was watching back through the footage, I was like, wow, that happened way earlier than I thought that it did, and that's why, as you can see, when I'm trying to, like, blot it out, I also get distracted by the texture that my paper towel is making, and I ended up making, like, a way worse mess than I even had to, but... You know, I just uh, decided to roll with it and see what I can do at the end, which I'm happy to say that it was way easier to fix this than I even thought. Like, this kind of stuff, as it turns out, is no problem whatsoever if you have some of that sweet um, poster paint in white, which I happen to have. And I actually think I got uh, the poster paint, it's snicker color. Um, it will be, there will be a little clip of me fixing it, like, near the end of the footage, which you will see. But, yeah, I got it from a set of art supplies from Hey Kala, um, Hey Kala's art box thing from a while back, maybe a couple of years ago. That was actually the first time I ever used Klinger, Roar and Klinger, um, Kl Kl Klingner. I can never, I never know how to pronounce that. I should probably look it up. Anyways, that was the first time I used those inks, and I've honestly been using them ever since, and I bought pretty much all the other colors that um, Hey Kala carries in her shop ever since then, and so that is my go-to colored ink, but um, yeah, that box actually came with a bunch of other art supplies, many of which hey, have become very um, important in my process, I guess. Uh, actually... The paper that I prefer nowadays, the Waterford Saunders watercolor paper, was also something I discovered through he Heikala's box. And so I would highly recommend if any of you guys ever saw the box and you want to check it out, it's... I would totally recommend it. I think it's a great investment. And um, yeah, actually, I <laughs> took a second and went to look into her shop and it appears that the box is unfortunately sold out so my bad you guys i um didn't mean to kind of get your hopes up but in good news i also saw that she still has the uh pebble gray set that has the three favorite colors of mine in in it which is the black sepia and umbra color so it's like a brown um vintage type of set that is called pebble gray so i would highly 
um, highly recommend that if you're looking for some new inks to try these are definitely my favorite inks but yeah so moving on um in case you were wondering what i used to put the tones on this drawing it's i basically used the same ink that i used which is the umbra from the ink set that i mentioned from hey Kyle's shop and i just diluted it a bunch as you can see for noel's hair and for some of the shadows um it's very very light so i put a ton of water and just mixed in something like a drop or of the ink and it produced this very nice beigey um tone and I don't typically plan out anything for stuff like this. I actually don't even bother planning anything out for finished pieces a lot of the time. But as you can tell, I, I'm just going about things kind of in a haphazard way. But more haphazard than typical. And um, I just kind of check what tone works where. And I will make certain small adjustments based on what is happening in the illustration in real time. And usually I'll... Um, try to just cut off how much I spend in terms of time and stuff like this because I do have a lot of other stuff to do and since like I mentioned these are just uh, chill sketchbook sessions to unwind and kind of relax and get back into the fun of things I unfortunately can only afford to spend so much time on them and I typically try to keep it below or under two hours for these um, I think it's just depending on which one of these it was. I don't know. It took somewhere between an hour and a half or two hours to complete. And that is something that I'm trying to keep in mind going forward as well. I mean, it's fine if I want to spend a little more time. I don't want to put too many restrictions on myself. But I was thinking about how this is a very similar approach that I had to one of the Inktobers from a few years ago. I think maybe from 2009. And it was one of my most prolific Inktobers, as in I managed to make updates a lot more than I typically did. And I did make it like the furthest I ever have into Inktober, which admittedly wasn't very far, but it was at least halfway through. I think I got to like number 16 or something. But um, yeah, so I had a very, a very similar approach to how much time I allotted to each illustration and I actually had an exact time window for these illustrations as well for the Inktober. I basically slotted in between 10, 10 p.m. and 12 p.m. or 11, sorry, or like 9.30 and 12 p.m. every day whenever I had time. And that seemed to actually be a pretty good slot for me. Sometimes I didn't really feel like recording, which is a shame. But also, I do remember that the footage that I didn't record usually produced like more spontaneous and free results. But, you know, I'm just trying to pretend like the camera is just part of my life now because there's nothing I can do without it. Because I do love making the YouTube content and I have to uh, get the footage for that. But... Anyway, as you can see, now I have finally gotten to the point in the video where I am fixing those errors of dropping the ink. And yeah, super simple. I just took some of that uh, knicker, knicker poster? Co yes, poster colors, um, which is white in this case. And um, as you can see, it's super opaque. It's kind of like gouache. Um, I think something comparable would be the whole bane acrylic gouache in white as well it's um it dries super opaque and does not get re revived with water and um the one thing i will say is that this paint is super thick and it does need a little bit of water to get it to a consistency that you can actually paint with but um i would suggest just keeping that consistency super super thick still um as much as you can get away with ju add just just enough water to revive it to make it usable because um if it's too diluted it will require multiple layers in order to cover up the dark plot blushes of um ink like i had to but yeah so like i said it was pretty straightforward and um yeah pretty not even that noticeable in the end i was surprised i expected it to be a lot more noticeable so this was kind of a relief i'm almost glad that it happened because now i know that if something like this occurs again i can fix it so very easily 
and as you can see i decided not to bother trying to fix the third splotch um over by Hajin's hand and that's also kind of a cool thing because i think it adds to the organic look of the bench that they're sitting on gives it a bit of a weathered look and in the end i think it really ended up working out since uh texturally this particular illustration doesn't really have much going on it was just the sketch was super quick i didn't really care to include too much um too many different textures in different places and uh, i thought it was kind of refreshing to um have a little bit of that speckled texture from using the paper towel to blot out the ink stains but yeah so yeah like i said kind of imagine um Kind of going back to that that mindset where um i used to draw on paper a lot and things like this would happen all the time and i would just randomly stumble upon tiny little tricks and techniques that looked interesting that i would potentially be interested in um using more often in some of my other artwork so yeah i'm pretty much nearing the end of this video right here and i wanted to thank you guys for the very warm reception of this video series so far i have been very happy with it and even though i do have some footage of newer illustrations that i haven't edited into videos yet i am pretty happy making these for now um it's a lot easier for me to, to fit the time into my schedule in order to make these videos happen in a timely manner and i am super happy with the results because they're just kind of fun to look at and um, i never know what i'm gonna end up filling the page with so i thank you so much for your comments and for all your encouragement and i will see you guys soon with the next video bye